Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tavis Leaf Glover, and today we're going to analyze a painting by Vincent van Gogh. So this painting by Vincent van Gogh, which is called Red Vineyards, is one of the only paintings he sold during his lifetime. So I thought it'd be cool to just analyze, see what design techniques he used, see the dynamic symmetry, and also look at his color theory. So let's get into the computer. This is gonna be kind of like a speed edit type of thing where I narrate over the video and show you how I analyze these master paintings. This type of analyzing of the master painters is really good to build your muscle memory so you can start to see the designs and diagonals and arabesques within nature, within your own photography, and also incorporate it into any paintings or drawings that you do. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how Van Gogh does this. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and I have an action that I run every time I analyze a painting, and I'll include that for the MasterPass members in the resources library or within the full article that I write on the blog. But it's got all of the layers that I want to analyze, and then some. So right here, what I'm doing is showing you how to easily calculate what rectangle the artist used. Sometimes this works, sometimes it, it doesn't work but it helps you narrow down what the root rectangle is instead of guessing and laying on a bunch of different dynamic symmetry grids. But what you do is you take the long side and divide it by the short side and you get a ratio and you can compare that ratio to the dynamic symmetry ratios and see which one is closest to. And sometimes these paintings are not the exact full painting that the artist intended. Sometimes they're cropped out to get rid of voids or shadows from the edges or things like that. Sometimes they're randomly resized on the internet. Just by dividing the short end of this image into the longer end of this image, and I got 1.282, and that's closest to the root phi rectangle, which is 1.272. So I used the root phi rectangle to analyze this. So with the dynamic symmetry grids, I also created actions that place the grid right on top of the painting or the image that I'm analyzing. So I'll just push play on the rectangle that I think it is, so it'll just place it onto the painting and convert it to white. Right now I'm gonna start with the gamut. The gamut is a limited number of directions and it's usually derived from the rectangle that's being used. So what I do when I analyze, I just analyze the four diagonals that are seen so we've got the Baroque, the Sinister, and four reciprocal diagonals. And I just analyze it to those four, but most master painters will use six to eight different directions to limit themselves and give the painting a sense of unity, movement, and rhythm across the entire image. And it's a hidden type of thing where you can feel it, the viewer can feel it, but they can never point out what's going on. So here we can see I'm paralleling and finding the directions from the arms and all around the painting. And I'm just using the four diagonals from the root phi rectangle. So he's even got an edge of the sun with a straight edge that parallels the root phi rectangle. And all these directions, they create unity across the image. And we can do this in photography, painting, drawing, anything. So I'm just gonna speed this up so you guys can see how I find the different directions that Van Gogh has incorporated. And I know he's got several other directions that we could find, but for time's sake, I usually just do the four just to show that he is using a gamut within his painting. So right now we're creating the 90 degree angle and the 90 degree angle creates a strength within the composition if it's on a tilt, if it's not straight up and down. We're used to seeing things that are straight up and down, but if it's on a tilt and it's a 90 degree angle, then it tends to add a sense of strength to the composition. Kind of like a box being held up by a stick that's a trap set for a rabbit or something like that. So here I'm finding a 90 degree angle created within the composition, and these techniques exist by the law of continuity, which means the mind will close the gap just like a dotted line our mind can easily close the gap and unite the different elements together if they're on the same line of continuity. I'm going to find another one in the corner here and several within the subjects and the background. So let's find the arabesques in the composition. The arabesque also adheres to the law of continuity, which is a gestalt psychology principle. A lot of these design techniques 
revolve around gestalt psychology, which is just the way the mind perceives visual stimuli, how it groups things together to make sense of everything. But if you know how to manipulate this type of thing, this visual perception within your paintings or your photography, then you can manipulate the way the viewer sees your art, which is pretty cool. It's like having a superpower or something. Then die as you deserve to. So right now we're continuing and we're going to take a look at the ellipses he incorporated into his painting. And like I said, this one is a really noticeable movement created within the arms and the bodies and in the dashed paint strokes at the bottom. You can see how he's hiding this movement. So you don't want to bring too much attention to your design techniques. It's kind of like a magician creating a magic trick. You don't want to bring attention to the tricks that you have up your sleeve. Otherwise, the audience will get bored. So here's another ellipse in the center of it. And you can see that with the edges of the women, the bottom section of their dresses, and the edge of the paint. You can see a subtle movement in there that's hidden, hidden but felt by the viewer. And this also unifies the, the women in the field. All right, so now we go on to enclosures. And the enclosures are also part of the law of closure as well as the law of continuity. They all work kind of hand in hand with these gestalt psychology principles. So the enclosure is a geometric shape that is created by multiple elements and it creates unity and movement. So here we see a box being created by the the heads of the women, the length of the horse carriage, down the man's legs, across the reflection, and then down to the woman on the bottom, and then back over across the red, and then back to the women on the left. So it's an enclosure that creates unity amongst all of those elements. Okay, so now we're going on to the coincidences, and coincidences are part of the law of continuity. They're edge-to-edge -edge relationships, just like ellipses and enclosures. And we can see how he's creating a vertical movement and uniting different elements within the composition just on this linear path. And we can go vertical, horizontal, and create diagonal coincidences as well. So you can see how he unites distant objects with objects that are more in the front. Even some of the paint strokes he uses, he creates unity by having them on the same linear path. You can see the edge of that horse's head lines up with the lady's dress. The edge of the saddle lines up with her head. The paint strokes in the ground line up with her head. The edge of the saddle. All of this creates unity and movement across the painting. A master painter, master draftsman, never places anything on his canvas unless it benefits the composition and the visual impact it has on the viewer. Now we can see the horizontal coincidences. So sometimes I just stretch it out, see if anything lines up, if multiple elements line up. Move it around, keep moving it around until I find something that lines up. You can see how the lady's back lines up with the lady's arm and the other two ladies' head. Usually major focal points, areas that you want the viewer's eyes to go, you'll create a coincidence with something else. You want it to kind of weave itself together, but in a hidden way. See how the man lines up with the sun and also the woman? All right, so now I'm creating diagonal coincidences across the painting. And later we'll see radiating lines, which are also diagonal coincidences, but they radiate from a common point. But you can see how he's lining up these arms and subjects with other subjects on a diagonal path. It's like a hidden mystery and you have to break it apart and see how these masters created their artwork. None of this stuff's arbitrary. If they're true draftsmen, which means they're designers, they know dynamic symmetry, they know how to create unity and movement, all this stuff, if they're true draftsmen, then they will all use these different techniques within their masterpieces. There's not enough draftsmen in the world that create art like this, and there needs to be more. You should share it and you should incorporate it into your art and practice it because the world's lacking this type of stuff. It was forgotten about and buried under the carpet for so long that it's good to have people finally seeing this and getting excited about it. And you can't just look at the obvious elements like the people. You have to look at the paint strokes within the ground and the background as well because all of these need to be united with the elements like the people within the composition. So everything needs to be united together.